As we all know, FreeCAD is a Paramount 3D modeling program where each piece, shape, or 3D model created with a need has a creation history that describes the steps to reach the final shape. The 3D parts created in FreeCAD are saved in .fcstd format, which stands for FreeCAD standard. The saved file is a toilet as a zip file. If you rename the file suffix to .zip, you will notice that it is possible to unzip it. If you turn a lot of 3D parts on FreeCAD and you have the same lessness I have, maybe you would like to know the tool I'm going to present in this video. Okay, let's suppose you draw a bunch of 3D parts in FreeCAD and you often forget about their dimensions and the way you created them. And because they are parts with a lot of history, it is difficult to modify something in them, especially if they are large parts with a lot of details and modifying or messing with them requires a lot of the computer's processor. This means it's wasting a lot of time for your computer processor and potential bugs or even TNP problem. Especially if you want to make significant change to the 3D part. I use it to waste a lot of time because of the bugs that appear in FreeCAD and also because of my notebook. This takes a lot of work, especially in reverse engineering. Because of the reasons I pointed out, you might choose to recreate the 3D model in these situations. In this video, I present a hand, the draft to work by 3D dimensioning tool. I have to warn you, don't expect to get all 3D dimensions of your 3D part using this tool. There is certainly another tool for this, but it's not the focus of this video. First of all, let's sign a 3D model, which will be aware of its real dimensions. So open your FreeCAD program on the start page, just create a new document, click here. Make sure you're on the part design workbench and then create a new body and a new sketch on the XY plane. On the sketch workbench, go to sketch uh, geometries. From here, select this option, center rectangle, and then check this option, rounded corners to run the corners of the rectangle and create a rectangle here in the region axis set 150 by 150 and 16 millimeters rounded corners now just leave this sketch press home on your keyboard and you'll see this sketch here now extrude it using the pad tool set 18 millimeters length here and enter select this face now and create a new sketch on it now just go to the sketch of drums again and now just click here and select this option triangle and create it here on the region axis in this way and next skip this tool and go to this tool here and then click in this construction cycle and set its diameter to 150 millimeters and then skip two times to leave this sketch and select pet tool to extrude this sketch set 30 millimeters here and enter and next select this edge control this edge and this edge here and now just press home and select fillet tool set 16 millimeters radius and ok and here we have this next create a new sketch now in the yz plane Switch to the session view and select the external jump tool, try this edge and this edge. Just select polling tool and then create this line here in these two endpoints. Now in this endpoint here and in this endpoint. Skip two times to leave this sketch. And then select pet tool. Set some to plane here and set a length of 42 millimeters and enter. And select this face and create a new sketch on it. Just click here, select external jump tool and extract this edge here, this edge and this edge and also this edge to get these all center points of these fillets. Next select cycle tool and create a cycle with a diameter of 16 millimeters. The same for these all center points. And we have this. Next select this tool again. And extract this edge, this edge here, and this edge, and now this edge. 
Next, use the triangle tool and create a triangle here in this way. And next, skip this tool and select this construction cycle and delete it. Select fillet tool and create a fillet here in these two lines and the same here and in this side here. Okay, next, use this tool here to make these center points constant. Just select this first point and now this point here and set constant and the same here and the same thing here. And we have this. This line here must be our horizontal line. To do that, we need to click in this tool here and it will automatically be our horizontal line. Okay, now two degrees of freedom. We need to click in this tool and then select these two lines. And now we have one degree of freedom. So next you can use this tool. Just click here in this edge and now in this line here and set the thickness, which have to be 10 millimeters and enter. Now skip two times to leave this sketch and then let's create a pocket using the pocket tool. Just set throw call here and the type and just click OK. As you can see, we have our model. Let's remember how the tool works because there's a radio video about it here on the channel. Or let's learn from scratch again if you are using the same version of Recad I am using. Let's move to the draft workbench. Just click here and select draft. And the tool we are going to use for the 3D dimensions, its icon is this. All 3D dimensions created using this tool depends on which working plane we are working on and which edge of vertex we have selected on the 3D model. Every time we start the draft or bench, the working plane is set to top, as you can see here, which corresponds to the XY plane of the 3D model, if I am not mistaken. We can check the placement of the working plane by making the grid visible. Just click here. And now if I rotate this model, you can see that the working plane is located here on this face, the XY plane of this 3D model. The placement of the working plane is customizable. We can choose if we want it in the front, top or right plane. What you have to do is to click here and from this task panel, select our plane. Also, we can attach this working plane in a face if you want. For instance, if I want the working plane here on this face, the first thing that I have to do is to select the face and then click here and as you can see, we have the working plane now located here on this face. Let's see how to create our first 3D dimension. First, let's change the working plane to the top. Just click here and select top XY. If I rotate this model, you can see that the working plane is located here. Just press home and hide this grid here. I don't like this grid. I don't like to see this grid on the model. So, okay, let's get the length of this edge here. To do that, first we need to click on this tool here and then click on select edge or we can pick the vertex of this edge. I select this edge and then place the dimension here. And as you can see, I have a length of 118 millimeters. Now let's get the dimension of this part using another way. So just call the tool and now we are going to select vertex of the of this part. So first rotate this model, zoom in and with the help of snapping tools, this tool here, let's pick this point and now rotate the model and pick this point. And now let's place the dimension here. And as you can see, we have a dimension of 150 millimeters as we designed it in the part design workbench. Now let's get the dimensions in this side here. So call this tool and next with the help of snapping tools, just pick this point here, this vertex, and next this point here and place the dimension here. And as you can see, we have 150 millimeters again. Okay, now let's see how to create a radio and diameter dimension. First, let's select this face here and set it as our working plane. Just click here 
and make the grid visible as you can see we have the working plane here just hide this grid and next just select our tool this tool here and to get the diameter of this hole here first we need to click here and this button select edge and then select the edge of this hole and place the dimension as you can see we have a diameter of 16 millimeters okay next let's see how to get a radial dimension just call the tool and now click on this button select edge and select this edge of this fillet and place the dimension here as you can see instead of getting a radial dimension we get a diameter dimension which is 32 millimeters for this edge here let's try again just click here in this tool and select edge select this fillet here and place the dimension here as you can see we have the same dimension it's a diameter dimension which is 32 millimeters so here using this tool the 3d dimension tool of drafter bench we can get a radial dimension of a fillet or cycle okay and next let's see how to get the distance between this edge here to this edge the first thing that we need to do is to set our working plane here on this face so just select this face here and click in here if we make the grid visible now we can see that our working plane is located here on this face hide this grid again and next just call this tool here and zoom in here with the help of snapping tools let's pick the midpoint of this edge and this midpoint of this edge and then place the dimension here as you can see we have a length of 42 millimeters this distance here okay next let's see how to create a angular dimension here on this face so select this face here and place the working plane here as you can see we have this and next let's create our angular dimension so just call this tool here and then click and select H or you can press A K in your keyboard and next you zoom in select this H and click here again and now select this H and as you can see here we have this small arc here let's disable the snapping tools shift S in your keyboard and place the angular dimension here and as you can see if we change to the top view we can see six degrees here for this edge and this edge here okay it's all now that we are done getting the 3d dimensions of this part you might be wondering what settings i'm using in these 3d dimensions well, the secret is in the annotation tab of the style settings tool. For instance, if you want to change the parameters of these 3D dimensions objects, what you have to do is to click in here and go to annotation. And as you can see, this is the preference that I use it for these 3D dimensions objects. Okay, let's for example change the font size to 8 millimeters and scroll down to lines and arrows and change here to 3 millimeters and then go to dimensions and for example change the stand line of a shot to 3 millimeters and the text spacing to 3 millimeters also and now we have to apply this to all these dimensions we can for example select this this dimension here and click on this button and as you can see now we have this preference applied to this dimension if we want to apply these configurations to these all dimensions what you have to do is to first click ok here and then go to the model tab in this review select these all dimensions and then go to this tool again go to annotation and now scroll down and click in select it, this button and now as you can see we have this scroll up and click ok now for example if we want to change the position of this d 
dimension here to here for example what you have to do is to select the dimension and then go to its properties go to dim line and we have to go to the y axis why you have to go to the y axis this is because this dimension was created in the top plane which is xy plane of this 3d model and if we look to here the y axis is moving in this direction so for example if we change this value to for example minus 100 we see this let's close this start page here we see this we can see that the dimension now is located here okay so if we select this again and for example here set minus 150 and enter what you see is this so this is how we can move the dimensions objects